Want to make a killing in the pools? Well, you've come to the right place. This is Sydney Airport, where we're waiting for the arrival of one of Australia's greatest sporting heroes in the world's most popular sport. The first homegrown champion, he captained his country's team in world competition. Rated as rank outsiders, he brought them home in triumph to a hero's reception at this very airport. But more about that in just a moment, because his plane has just landed, and I have another special reception for him lined up. Would you care to join me? G'day, Johnny. Roger Clemson. How are you? <laughs> You're right offside, boy. And Johnny Warren, that captain of the so Socceroos, good. this is your life. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> John, would you like to sit down? I'd love to, yeah. <laughs> Johnny, it's only a few years ago that soccer was struggling for recognition here in Australia, regarded by many as just a game that migrants play. It's now the fastest growing sport in the country. This team changed all that, the Socceroos. Like the mouse that roared, they blazed their way to the pinnacle of international sport, the World Cup. And you were their inspiration, Johnny, for the spirit of soccer is bred in you from the moment you're born on May the 17th, 1943 at Randwick in Sydney, the youngest of three brothers in a sports-loving family. In fact, you're only five years old when you sign up for your first game. Johnny, you were so small, I had to lift you onto the table to sign your name. Your father, Wick Vic Warren, and with him your mother, Marge, and your brothers, Ross and Jeff. Vic, you were Johnny's first coach. Now, wasn't he a bit young to be signing a contract at only five years of age? <laughs> he was, Roger, really, you know, but uh, as far as John's concerned, <laughs> he always did his own thing, so it didn't make any difference to John. He just signed up anyway. Oh, did he? Very much like his mother. <laughs> <laughs> Russ, would you care to tell us about the story of the signing up? Oh, well, Jeff and I, Roger, were signing with the Botany Methodist uh, church site, mm. and uh, John, uh, being only five years old, uh, he had to be in it as well, and uh, Dad had to lift him up on the table then to, uh, to sign the form. And in fact, he didn't sign it, just put his mark on the, on the card, and uh, we didn't really realise then what a mark he was going to make on Australian soccer. I bet. Jeff, did you encourage your little brother in some way? Yeah, uh, sure, Roger. Yeah, I, uh, John always used my uh, football boots, <laughs> and I left uh, a lot of football magic in those boots. <laughs> and all John had to do was run. <laughs> <laughs> Marge, what's it like having four red-hot soccer fans under the same roof? Oh, heck, you know, all those dirty socks and pants, you know? Yes. But really, I had really three sporting sons who we're very proud of, and they're all good at sport, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're all good at sport, and, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> and, um... We're, we're really proud of them all, the I three of them. Are. Right, we're very happy indeed. But if we could indeed. live it all over, we would. You right? wouldn't do the same yes, thing again, would you? Word. I just want to say we're very happy indeed to have all of you here, the Warren family tonight. And thank, thank you all you. very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Johnny, it's off on to Cleveland Street High, where you excel at cricket and rugby union, playing district soccer on weekends with your friends. He taught me how to smoke. Your friend for 27 <laughs> years, John Chegwin. Oh, no. <laughs> John, did he really teach you how to smoke? <laughs> He led me astray at the age of eight. <laughs> and he led me astray in, uh, in uh, other years, but in boyhood years and teenage years. But uh, 
Really, they were fantastic years. And seriously, we used to play sport all the time. We were there, we played <laughs> cricket, golf and tennis. And well, we have a shot nice. here which you might like to have a look at, I think. <laughs> not in, not in uh, soccer uniform. What's that there? Look at that. If you figure he looked good in a soccer uniform, you should have seen him in that schoolgirls. There we see he was the Bells of St. Trinity. Yes, is that yes, right? Yes, yes. Fantastic. <laughs> well, John, yeah, that, thank you. Uh, you go to, what else is to come after that, Chegg? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say thank you for being one of the Bells of St. Trinity's and thank That's you for great. being here. Yeah, nice. Well, well, right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnny, it's as a teenager. It's as a teenager playing for the Canterbury Marricksville Juniors that uh, you're spotted by the late Jim Bellwood. A week before your 16th birthday, you become the youngest player ever in Sydney First Division. They call us the Canterbury Bears. And they call this man uncle, one of the greatest coaches in Australian soccer, Joe Vlasitz. <laughs> uncle Joe, you played first division in Hungary, and then as coach of the Canterbury Babes, you had tremendous faith in Australian youth, didn't you? Yes, Rogers. This country had a lot of talent. A very good example, John. Uh, the outstanding determination and willingness, and the shy boy who coming such a height. I many years I connected with John, and I am very proud of what he done from Australia. Well, Uncle Joe, you played a major part in Australian soccer and in Johnny's career. We thank you very much for both. <laughs> Johnny, you shine as a sharp shooting forward for Uncle Joe's Canterbury Babes, but the burden of mixing studies and sport is a tough one. At one stage, you're working a milk run with your brother Ross, studying commerce at university, and holding down an office job by day as well as playing top soccer. To pay for your education, you transfer to Budapest St. George at a record fee. And here's the man who became your mentor, coach Laurie Hedges. Laurie, when did you realize that you had a champion on your hands? It takes about two hours. <laughs> <laughs> when I met him, I already saw, saw him playing many times. I met him and he was so keen and already was dedicated. And, and uh, he was asking for an extra training session. And Johnny's problem was that Australia was not in the national scheme. And you remember you asked me, ever, mm. we mic it? And I said to you, Johnny, you're that good? You might get even you be the greatest captain for Australia team. Yeah. You remember? Yes, very well. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sorry, great having you here. Johnny, in 13 seasons with St George, you taste every honour the game has to give. But your worst hiding comes from one of your best friends. One. Two, three, four, five. <laughs> the man who scored five goals against you in a grand final, Australian international, Johnny Watkins. <laughs> now, John, this John, I mean, you two grew up together as the greatest of friends, lived in the same street, went to the same school, and shared three World Cup campaigns together, right? But I understand that he had a, a few growing pains, right? Yes, he certainly did, Roger. Uh, John was always a skinny little <laughs> kid. <laughs> and uh, I remember the time that, uh, you remember the time that we went to uh, try for under 12 reps? Yes, very well. Yeah. And uh, John missed out, you missed out, and uh, the manager said, John, you come back next year, you eat all your porridge up, and come back next year, no, no. and you, you make it next year. Mm. And John, obviously you were heeded the, the manager's words, mm. and you've been a great ambassador for Australia, and John, has been yeah. a tremendous name. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, John. Johnny. Johnny, it's 1965. You both make your international debut, as Australia loses twice to North Korea. A humble beginning to your dreams of someday contesting the World Cup. Then in 1967, on the eve of your final university exams, 
You're offered the Australian captaincy. The team is about to leave on an Asian tour. You face a cruel decision. Do you turn down the greatest honour in sport, or do you throw away years of study? What you do and why, we shall find out in just a moment. Johnny, within sight of the university degree you've sacrificed so much for, you face a momentous decision, a secure future or soccer. Johnny, luckily for Australia, you chose soccer. A man who's followed your career from the start, world-renowned soccer commentator from the ABC, Martin Royal. You, of course, are with the Socceroos on that 1967 tour of Asia. Now, how did they get on? They won the Vietnam tournament and they went through the whole tour undefeated. They played 10 matches, they won 10, they scored 39 goals, and uh, he scored a few of them, and they had nine scored against them. What was Johnny's impact on Australian soccer at that time? Well, I think it was the turning point, really, in Australian soccer. Here was a boy, uh, a youngster, who became captain of Australia, an Australian-born player, young player, captain of his country. And uh, I guess an awful lot of kids at that time and since have made John Warren their example. Martin Royal, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. Johnny, in 1970, the Socceroos begin an ambitious world tour under a new and dynamic coach. That was the greatest performance that Johnny Warren has played for Australia. The man who's worked beside you to build Australian soccer, former national coach, Rally Rasick. <laughs> well, that world tour was climaxed by an epic victory against Greece. Tell us about Johnny's performance. I mean it. That was the greatest performance that Johnny Warren has played for Australia. And 3-1 uh, victory to Australia, which is first defeat of Greece in Athens in five years. And I, I, I would say that due to the Johnny Warren's performance. Back home, Johnny, you face the worst crisis of your career, a crippling knee injury. For a while, it seems, you may never play again. And that threat forces you to find another way for staying close to soccer. In Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, you study for your FIFA International Coaching Certificate and emerge as ducks at the school. The man who inspired you there is legendary German coach Detmar Kramer. And from Vienna, he sends you this message. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Johnny, old friend. I'm very sorry that I can't come to Sydney to meet you again and to bring you all my best wishes for a successful future. But I want to tell you how well I remember the times of our good cooperation in Sydney and also in Kuala Lumpur. And least but not least, I am very happy to call you my friend. And take care for yourself and keep, keep up your important work for the development of football in Australia. Hope to meet you again soon, Johnny. Your Stetma and all the best for you. Under miracle surgery, Johnny, your knee heals. Against all the odds, you make the squad for the most vital matches in Australia's soccer history. The 1974 World Cup finals in Munich are in the offing. To qualify, Australia must beat Korea. Australia wins. The no-hoper team they used to laugh at defeats Korea and breaks through to join the world's 16 finest teams competing for the greatest trophy in sport. You become the first and only Australian soccer player to receive the MBE as you prepare at last to play in the World Cup. We call him Skippy. Your soccer teammates, Ray Bartz, Anotti Abonyi. <laughs> Okay, Ray, where did the nickname Skippy come from? <laughs> well, Roger, as you realise, Johnny was the original um, captain of the Socceroos, and uh, being the skipper, that was eventually shortened by the boys <laughs> to Skippy. But really, John's popularity with the boys was, I think, um, uh, 
put on show when we did get through to to, Mexi uh, to Munich and uh, John after being out of the game for almost two seasons with a crippling knee injury fought his way back into the team and the boys voted him back in as vice captain again which I think just goes to show how popular yeah, this bloke is yeah. with the team. Thank you Ray. Now Otty, he went to Germany's rank outsiders. The experts predicted Australia would be annihilated. Now what really happened? Well unfortunately uh, we didn't win any games Roger but uh, we weren't disgraced by any means. Uh, I think we shocked a lot of teams in our first game against East Germany where I think uh, we all agreed that Johnny was our best player until he got injured. We lost 2-0. And then we went on to lose against West Germany in the second game, 3-0. They, of course, uh, went on to win the World Cup that year. And uh, then we drew against Chile in the final game. So I think it was a tremendous effort. By yes, indeed. I think the fighting spirit of the Socceroos was certainly uh, created with far more respect for Australian soccer because of what you did. Now, Johnny, after 43 internationals for Australia, you coached St George on an irresistible run home to the 1974 Grand Final, your last game as a player. And here are the dying moments of that game as you storm through to score the winning goal, a goal in a thousand. Just take a look at this. Warren. Getting around Marnock. He's beating up a speed. And it's a goal for Johnny Warren. And Warren collects it on the ground inside the penalty box. But the mission accomplished. And I don't think he's probably scored a final goal of that in the whole of his career. Johnny, you've played with and against some of the greats of soccer throughout the world, and here's one of the greatest. On film from London, your friend Bobby Charlton. I think it's fair to say that when we first used to come down to Australia, matches were particularly easy. It's not so, so much the case these days. And I think one of the reasons is that your type of play and similar types of players as yourself have really boosted the Australian game until it's at the stage where it is now, probably just on the verge of breaking into the big time. Johnny, the heroes of Munich changed the face of Australian soccer. In schoolyards, back streets and paddocks, every small boy wants to be a socceroo. So, now you decide to put something back into the game that's given you so much. It isn't long before you tackle your greatest challenge yet. We had no money and no team, but we had Johnny Warren. The man who issued that challenge, Theo Mullis, and your right-hand man in the coaching game, Victor no, Fernandez. <laughs> Victor, what was the challenge? We were going to work on a brand new national competition and uh, with very little money to buy players and without any players. <laughs> this is how we started. So we had to go through local clubs and schools that we loved the uh, 1977. A yeah. very difficult and exhausting job, That's I remember. Right. <laughs> Yes, he did a great job. Very nice. Theo, of course, you were responsible for taking Johnny to Canberra. Now, has that paid off? Has it ever? <laughs> <laughs> it paid off in many, many ways, actually. One of, when we had a meeting, the first meeting, we had somebody suggested that Johnny Warren would come and coach Canberra City. And I said, well, I put my hand up and said, I'll win the million dollars lottery. I haven't won the lottery, but we won Johnny Warren. And for that, you know, we are very... Happy on that show. <laughs> thank you both very much. Yes. Victor Sia, thank you for being here. <laughs> Johnny, you've always been interested in kids and uh, evangelised for soccer in the schools. In fact, you team up with Raddy Rasick to form the first Australian soccer coaching school with live-in camps for young players in Sydney, Melbourne and Orange. And even as far as Alice Springs. A top no, soccer no. player and first assistant secretary in the Department of Aboriginal Affairs, no. your good friend, Charles Perkins. <laughs> Charles, will you tell us about Johnny's outback coaching safaris? <laughs> well, we uh, persuaded him to go up uh, north to as far as Alice Springs and right up to Darwin <laughs> to coach uh, Aboriginal kiddies, and uh, he was quite prepared to do that, and we were happy to have him. 
He did a good job? Oh, yeah, he's real good with Aboriginal kids. He gets to them, he gets to them in a nice way, and uh, he gets a message across, and he's got good talent there to work on as well, you know? <laughs> Might... A bit biased, I am, of course, but uh, we think we'll get a couple of peelies out of what Johnny's effort. <laughs> Harry, well, a couple of Harry Williams will do. Charles, thank you very much for coming from Canberra to be with us tonight to tell us. Thank you. Thanks indeed, Charles. Thank you. Thank you. Johnny, you coached in Fiji two years ago and revolutionised the game there too. So it was a, a proud moment when the Australian team played against your protégés in Suva. Bulumbula, Johnny. Oh, no. The captain of Fiji, Johnny, yes, he's flown here to be with you tonight, George Coy. Oh. George, what was the result of that game? Uh, in fact, uh, we beat <laughs> Australia in that game by one goal to nil. Uh, uh, apart from that, um, uh, Johnny, I, on behalf of the, the, the Fiji boys and uh, everyone in Fiji, I'd like to thank you so much for, for contributing your, your precious time and bringing up the stand-up stock in Fiji. They, they really, in fact, uh, wanted you to sort of, in the near future, to come over and, and bring back, the, uh, revive, revive that, that coaching that you've uh, we have left with them for the next Southwest game, and we hope that uh, you will turn us down this time, and uh, we hope to do well in the next Southwest game. Right, George, Thank you. I would love to. Thank you. Thank you for coming from Fiji. Johnny, your dedication has led to the rise of Australian soccer to world class, and here now is a man who has shared that long struggle with you, one of your staunchest admirers, the President of the Australian Soccer Federation, Sir Arthur George. <laughs> Sir Arthur, what does Johnny Warren mean to Australian soccer? The Socceroos that he led in 1973 were the catalysts for an explosion amongst the youth of Australia. You'd be proud to know today, Johnny, that 27,000 teams under 17 are playing soccer in Australia. And the Socceroos, I think, were primarily responsible for that. Johnny, when the, Her Majesty the Queen honoured you by making you a member of the Order of the British Empire, she did so, I think, not only because of your talents, but because, but because you represent the clean living, sporting Australian that we in Australia are all proud of. Johnny, <laughs> soccer's been very good to you, but you've been good for soccer. Thank Best you. of luck. Thank, Thank you, Sir George, for what you said. Well, Johnny, Johnny, there's just one person missing now, isn't there? Yes, there is. Your greatest <laughs> fan, and here she is, oh, your daughter, Sharon. Johnny Warren, captain of the Socceroos, this is your life. Thank you very much. This is part of TAA's Friendly Way service.